Hi guys, welcome to this session on LibreOffice Calc. In this module, I want to go through some basic functions and some basic sums. So I'm going to create a very small, simple budget sheet. So in cell B2, I'm just going to type MON short for Monday. And I want to obviously put Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday across there. So all I have to do is set the, my mouse in the bottom right corner, get this big cross, pull that across to where I want it, Friday. And then at the end, I'm going to put total. In column A, I want some categories. So car, tax, gas, water, electric, say, or whatever else you want. And then total underneath that. And then the other functions I want to use is going to be average, max, and min and let's go for count as well eh? and then let's call this weekly budget weekly budget now I want that merged and centered across the top highlight across the top select merge and center then that becomes the title I want to highlight the whole table to put all borders on and I want to color this bit just undo that, I didn't mean to do that. I want to colour this bit yellow so it stands out. So go to the yellow paint pot there and just colour that yellow. So the formulas are not yellow. The yellow bit is where the data is going to go. Now let's add some data. Let's say I spend £10 every day on the car, fuel or whatever. So again I can just, if it's going to be 10 every day, I can just pull that across and it'll fill it in. Um, now it's gone... 11, 12, 13, 14. So what I need to do on this one is just to make it 10. I don't want to do that. So in Excel, that would have just stayed as 10. But in Calc, it automatically does that, which you might think is a better option. I do as well. But I want it to be 10, 10, 10, 10 all the way across. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and then highlight this area. And paste, Control V, tells me that there's already data there. Yes. 10 10 10 so next one down let's say it starts on one and steps by six goes to seven highlight the two of them pick the group up pull it across and it maintains that step value so I'll just do that again let's go five for gas and ten highlight those two pull it across and it'll pick that up step now Let's go for water, starts off at 10, goes up by 5, so that's going to be 15. Highlight the two, pull it across. And then let's say electric's going to be £5 every day. Copy, and then just paste it in the space. Like so. Now all of this I want to be in pounds. So I'm just clicking this little button. There we go, in pounds. Now to work out the totals, the average, max, min and count of all of this, I need to use functions. So to add up the, a list list or a list, it's the sum function that you normally use. And the most common functions, but not all the functions, are sitting here. So there's the functions we're going to use. So I'm clicking on sum and it's picking up B3 to B7, which is correct, so I'm going to click the tick, and then I'm going to pull that across, because that's what I want for each column. And calc is uh, intuitive enough to twig that you want to do that for each column. You don't have to keep doing it. So I'll do that again on this one. Sum, this time it's going B3 to F3. Check it up here. Tick, pull it down. And then in, just in line with this 95, and that's the spend on the week. Now, when you do the average function, so I'll go for it up here. Average is picking up, just picking up B8. It's not picking up this list, but I'm just going to select this list. B3 to B7, I want. B3 to B7, tick. 6.20 is the average. Pull that across. 
and then the same process will be for max tell it where to look b3 to b7 tick pull it across and then the last one min select the range you can actually type the range up here if you want but you might as well select it if you can see it pull it across now count I want to know how many items there are so count same thing select the list b3 to b7 click the tick there are five items and then you just pull that across now if I want to do a percentage to work out what that 31 pound is there as a percentage of a 315 at the end this isn't a function it's just basic math but if I just put a title there percent let's have a look at what the formula for that would be equals this cell 31 pound so that's cell B8 divided by the total cell which is G8 now I'm just going to tick that for a moment so it comes up with a number less than one so in maths you'd go times 100 but in spreadsheets not just this but in Excel as well you can just click on the format and then that will give you the percentage which is 9.84 which is correct now if I pull that across I want to pull it across a couple because it's going to come up with an error message it says div 0 basically you can't divide by 0 because if you look at the formula C8 is the total for Tuesday however H8 is a blank cell and that will move along again that's going along to I8 so there's two ways of fixing this the the wrong and the long way and then the quick way so the long way would be to manually type it each time c8 by g8 d8 by g8 and so on and so on it wouldn't take you that long because it's only a few but what you should really do is lock this cell within the formula so that it doesn't actually move across now the symbols to lock a cell are dollar signs and if i click up onto the formula bar there is a keyboard shortcut that will put dollar signs in front of the G and the 8. I only actually need it in front of the G, the column G is what I need to lock. But if in doubt, I always tell people just to put it on. The F4 function key on a keyboard, a full keyboard, is what you need to use. You can actually type those as well. Now, if you've got a laptop, you, you might not just be able to press the F4 by itself. You might need to use the FN key. It depends what type of laptop you've got. But if I tick that formula... Nothing happens to the result, but now I should be able to pull that across, and I can. If I do that again coming down, so if I go, what is that £50 as a percentage of this 350, 15 equals, in this case, G3 divided by G8, and I'm going to pull that down the screen, and I don't want the G8 to move down to G9 to G10 because that would just be rubbish. So I can press the F4 key right away there, because my cursor's on it, and then tick, put it to a percent, 15 percent, pull that down in line with the total, and that gives you that. So that you wouldn't pull this down any further than that because that would not make sense. If I just show you, these are all just nonsensical figures, so it doesn't make sense to do that. Sometimes that'll say div zero, sometimes that'll say 110 or some other random figure but now you've set this up if I just tidy this up um, put the grid back on this bit so just go back into there and put the grid back on so we have the grid and then just merge and center the title one more cell across take it off put it on and then we're back to square one we've got everything how we want it to be now if you want to put a chart on this I'll just put the title in there for percent if you want to put a chart on this, obviously I don't want all this information to be in the chart. Let's say I just want the, the days, the week and what I've spent. So I'm highlighting that. I'm holding my control key down and highlighting the actual figures. So I'm not really interested in the categories in this, this little chart. Or you could do it that way around. I'll try both. See which one looks best. If I go insert chart, there's the chart. I'm not going to follow the wizard, but I'm just going to click finish. And then... Um, if you want to put the data labels on there, you can put the data labels. This is quite a big chart at the moment, so just move that across a little bit. Whoops. 
So set that down the bottom. That's don't need the title there. Get rid of that. There you go. So that's your little graph. Just happens to be sequential. You're getting worse as the week goes on. So let me just put a different figure in here to make this slightly different. 34. There we go. So the graph reacts to the data. So that's just looking at the days of the week. Let's say I want to, let's try doing the categories. So if I highlight the categories and then the control key and the figures, try the same. Chart. Now this isn't looking cool. Let's have a look at this. We now need to go through the series in rows. So now that looks better. So it didn't pick it up straight away, but now it's looking great. I'm not going to go through the rest of it. I'll just go finish. Get rid of the label there. Don't need that. And then just make this a lot smaller. By getting this corner, just bringing it down like the other one. And then parking it next to it. And then grab it. Like so. Let's add the data labels again. So now we've got the spend by day and the spend by category, whichever you want. But this is just a very simplistic budget sheet, a weekly budget sheet that you can set up for yourself. Keep a track of your spend. So hopefully this little video has been of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you on the next one.